Hi everybody, Kat here. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a very intuitive painting endeavor, so let's get started. Right now, with my inexpensive paper, I'm going to be using these following colors that are listed above. And I'm just going to evenly wet my paper. And I'm going to charge in, this is the phthalo blue, and that's the turquoise. Uh, I'm just charging in wherever I feel. I am not thinking about anything right now. I am simply putting down, I just wanted winter colors. So cool, I wanted it to look cold and bright. And so I chose these colors. The, the Quinn Magenta that I chose, it mixes well with all these blues and you end up with pretty violets and purples and so that's why I chose this one and that's of the Viridian green I thought that would be a nice a nice change just an addition to it just something to to add to the colors sometimes when you charge in paint and it's very watery things fade out and you never really get a second chance on your background <laughs> so um, I just wanted to make sure it was well saturated. Now here is the plastic wrap and what you're going to see me do is coax it. I want it to, I'm trying to get the folds to go vertically and so I just keep playing with it until, well until it goes where I think I want it to but you never really know how it's going to end up. There we go, and I let it dry, and here's one I did earlier. So I stand back and I decide I see some icicles. So I am now mimicking the colors beneath on, on my first layer, and I don't want to cover them up at this point. I just want to kind of mimic them. So I'm going over the same layers with the same colors and outlining what looks like icicles to me. So. I don't know if this is going to be some kind of cave or I have no idea. And I mixed a nice pretty purpley color with the blue and, and the magenta and because the pink was a little too pink for me. And as you see here, so this is a very, very intuitive painting. So what I chose, I wasn't sure if I was going to publish this, but there's something that happens in the middle of this painting that I really want you to see that describes exactly what intuitive painting is all about. So for me, the plastic wrap pattern gave me a starting point and I saw icicles, but the painting takes a turn and it's, it's quite amazing what, what, where this ended up. So, I find this way of painting very relaxing and it's very creative, uh, but it did take over two hours to do it and that's why I sped the video up. Much of the time is spent with my chin in my hand and I'm contemplating, I'm observing, I'm turning the work around, I leave the room, I come back and whatever it results in, whatever you decide you see, it's going to be unique and very eye-catching. I guarantee you that. I think it's a lot different from painting something from a reference photo. It's a lot, it's a little more freeing. It's a little scary if you're afraid that you're not very creative and that's okay. You can all always draw something that you don't see, but with this, you're working with shapes that already exist and you're just, you're sort of embellishing them or you're intensifying them. And I find that just in itself is, is a, lot, a very relaxing thing to do. Some people paint intuitively with a blank page, no plastic wrap, no guidelines. They just go with the color. Like today I started out knowing the colors I wanted to use. I was looking for something cool as I said, and the, the plastic wrap was 
it, it, it gave me something to work with. The blank page can be pretty intimidating. So maybe try to set out a few guidelines for yourself and, and see if that helps make it a little less scary. <laughs> so as you can see, I've found one more icicle. Uh, again, just mimicking the colors beneath. And in some cases, I don't use the exact colors beneath. But uh, for the most part, that's what I'm doing. And then I decide I don't see icicles anymore. I see a star. <laughs> so I decided to add the star in. And then this painting really takes a turn. And this is what I wanted you to see. I decided that I couldn't find any more icicles. I didn't see them anymore. And after turning, I saw a tree on an embankment and a stream. And so I begin to intensify the shapes that I see. that the saran wrap left. And I'm just darkening them so that the whiter parts of the pattern start to look like snow. And down here I'm adding a bit more blue because I still found it a little pinky and I wanted it to look like a puddle. So as you can see, what it starts looking like is this body of water and trees on an embankment. That's that's what I see. So. I take a darker color, I just mixed a, I, geez, I think that's an indigo, and I just start outlining what I see are, as branches. And I leave the tops of them white and unpainted so that it looks like snow on the top. And as you can see here, I'm just trying to uh, outline like outline a, a couple of trees like I think I end up with three right now you're that's not very noticeable but you'll see by the end of the painting that there are three trees there and so this takes like I said a lot of time with your chin in your hand and you, you're contemplating you're thinking you're looking you're trying to follow your instincts and if it doesn't work when you use inexpensive paper, the colors do not, they do not seep into the paper the same. They don't soak in the same as they do with 100% cotton paper. So what's good about that is that you can remove color a little easier, a little more easily if you, if you have to, if you, there's something you really don't like. So now I'm trying to make this look like there's branches from an unseen tree creeping over from this from the left side and they I'm doing the same thing I'm just underlining some of those jagged edges to make them look like branches with some snow on the top I really hope you give this a try and as I said nothing will ever be the same because you can't duplicate this. This is a one and only, okay, here I go. It's a one and only painting, folks. So now I get my, my white paint and I start to go over some of those lines that I left white, like the part of the pattern that's pale. So it's to, it, just to make it look like there's snow there. So these icicles now, look like they could be uh, ice that's grown across this pond or it could be fallen branches but either way it goes from one side of the body of water to the other and it's got snow on it and it's starting to look very wintry to me just like I wanted in the beginning but I really thought I was going with icicles. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to share this video with you. It's to show you this kind of painting where it takes you uh, on this little unknown journey. You just, it, I was not expecting to go here. And I just kept seeing these trees every time I walked around my table. 
Now over here, I did find, like I thought the pink reflection from the sky onto this embankment was nice, but I found it a little too heavy. So I'm adding in some soft looking snow to, and to see where that goes. And it's, it's working. It's, 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 I like that it looks like the body of water now has more definition so you can see where it's coming from. And right there, I kept seeing like an aloe plant. I don't know. I didn't like that area. So I really covered it with some white paint to see how that would look. And what I do is I make a change and then I work on something else because if I keep at it, I'm, I, you're not going to see it any differently. Sometimes you need to step away, go do something, come back. Sometimes it's even the next day. You know, if you're not in a rush to do this, uh, you can always put it aside and go back to it. Sometimes I ask my husband, do you see some, do you see this? Do you see, you know, when we were kids and we looked up in the sky and looked at the clouds, we all saw something a little differently. And sometimes we saw the same thing. Okay. So now behind these trees, I want it to look a little darker. So I apply blues and some darker blues. I mixed up a indigo and a blue, uh, different, all different shades of blue. I wasn't very fussy about it. And so I'm just defining a few more branches. I'm adding white to the top of them. So it looks like the snow has fallen on them. And I'm doing the same to the other side. I really didn't think this painting was, was going in this direction and uh, <laughs> it ended up looking quite magical if you ask me. Uh, magical and, and wintry and so that's why I called it the Winter Wonderland painting I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just still working with my white. Now down here. I am really struggling with down here. I don't like it. Don't like what it looks like. So I have to do some work. And I'm all over the place. As you can see, I let one area dry uh, or, and, or if, if I'm stumped, I just go to the next area and then I go back to it. And I'm glad I did that because I solved the problem on the bottom very soon you're going to see what I do and I'm making the back behind the trees a little darker adding snow here and there just to define them a little more and so that you get the impression that there's not much back there to look at everything that's worth looking at is right there in front of you and back there it's just all dark and fuzzy Yes, you see them? They're coming alive now, the trees. You can really see them there. And if you don't like a color you used, just go over it again with another color. It's really no big deal. And that star just looks like uh, in it's in place of a sun or a moon just fit in perfectly. More snow. I had, I had to water down my, my, uh, bleed proof white because it crystallized on me and I used some distilled water in it, but I put too much. So when it dries, it fades. So I usually have to put a second or third coat on it, which is not a big problem. I think it was worth it actually, because you could see the snow a lot better.
Lots of fiddling. Lots and lots of fiddling. <laughs> Just going over all the same spots. And right here, that pink area is bothering me at the bottom. So I decide I'm going to take a Mr. Clean scrubby uh, and very gently remove the pattern that the saran wrap left because it's it's sort of distracting me. And then I fix it up with some white and it just falls into place. It just starts to look like it belongs on the painting. It's just what it needed. So by adding now with snow and the turquoise that I added, I, I find it fits in better. And, and the turquoise gives the, the snow some definition so it doesn't look like it's just laying flat. And it also looks like the water could be seeping over to the left side. So I like that too. I liked how that turned out. So there's nothing more uh, rewarding than doing a painting that you had, you had no idea where you were going and you finished this painting and you really like it. There's nothing more rewarding than that. So I really want you to give this a try. You know, like I said, you can, you can aim for this. Or you can try to do your own. Go by your gut. Go by what you see. So here I'm adding white for snow, splashing that on. And that is our final product. I hope you really enjoyed this video and that you give it a try. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and comment. I'd love to hear from you. Happy watercoloring. Bye bye.